after doing this part we are left with the Fourier analysis of the basis so our x-ray diffraction or any other wave diffraction that we can consider is going to depend on the electron density that we have in the system and the electron density is going to depend on the basis of basis that is the group of atoms that we consider at associated with each lattice point that is going to determine the intensity of the diffracted pattern so it's important to perform a Fourier analysis of the basis So when the diffraction condition is given as delta k equals g, when this condition is satisfied we get some intensity in the diffraction pattern. When this condition is satisfied the scattering amplitude for n cells capital N number of cells let's consider that that's all we have in the system or that's where we are shining the wave and considering the diffraction this uh, can be written as we have this notation F for scattering amplitude and it's a function of G now so we are indexing it with G it's given as N times integration over the cell dv the electron density function as a electron density as a function of the position vector and e power minus i g dot r we have worked this out earlier we are just using it here this one can be written as n sg where this sg this quantity is called the structure factor structure factor of the diffraction intensity it is useful to write the local electron concentration nr as the superposition of electron concentration functions nj associated with each atom j that means what are we going to do consider rj that's the vector at the center of the jth atom if we have that then we can construct a quantity n r minus rj this quantity defines the contribution of the jth atom to the electron concentration at point r so at a given point r there may be contributions from different atoms in the electron density so this quantity here would give us the contribution of jth atom at the position r so the total electron concentration at r due to, due to all atoms in the unit cell that can be given as in r this function it would uh, if we sum over j s is the number of atoms in the basis summed over uh, n j r minus r j if we perform this where s is as i said the number of atoms in the basis okay so s is the number of atoms in the basis and if we sum over j up to s we will obtain uh, n r now the structure factor may be written as integrals over 
s number of atoms in the unit cell so sg this quantity structure factor is sum over j up to s integration dv nj function of r minus rj and exponential of minus i g dot r what are we going to do here we are going to put r minus rj kind of terms here and that we will have to compensate somewhere outside so we can write this quantity as sum over j exponential of minus i g dot r j if we do this then inside here we will have r minus r j so we write dv in j it's a function of rho now we are defining r minus r j as rho exponential of minus i g dot rho so rho is nothing but r minus r j we have made this substitution here after doing this now we can define the atomic form factor that is the contribution from each atom as for ith atom it is integration over dv in j function of rho exponential of minus i g dot rho so this integral part is called the atomic form factor and the part outside integral is that of summing over the contribution from every atom so this one has to be integrated over all space and if nj is an atomic property then the atomic form factor fi is also an atomic property but this assumption that nj would be an atomic property is not really confirmed because in a solid there would be overlap of electrons so this assumption has some restrictions although by and large it is valid but so when we consider x-ray diffraction it's the majority of the electrons that are going to matter so those that participate in bonding are minority those are associated with the nuclei that that is majority so this one this assumption that we made is not true but still it would be useful with that understanding we can combine the above equations that we have uh, constructed so far to obtain the structure factor for the basis sg with the help of the previous equations we can write that it is sum over j fj Okay, let it, let's write it fj because we have function of j here, not i. So, it's sum over fj times exponential of minus i g dot rj. Now, for an atom j, we can write its position vector rj equals xj a1 plus yj a2 plus zj a3 xj yj zj these have values ranging from 0 to 1 as we have discussed earlier 
with this we have g dot r r j this quantity going to v1 b1 plus v2 b2 plus v3 b3 dot product with xj a1 plus yj a2 plus zj a3 by putting the forms of b1 b2 and b3 that we have obtained for different kind of lattices we can find exactly what this is going to be uh, well uh, we have the relationship between b1 uh, the dot product of b1 and uh, a1 b1 a2 and all that it's twice pi delta ij bi dot aj is twice pi delta ij with that we can already write that this dot product is going to give us twice pi v1 xj plus v2 yj plus v3 zj the other components of the product will vanish and with this we can write sg equals so sg is now a function of these indices v1 v2 v3 this becomes sum over j fj exponential minus i twice pi v1 x1 sorry xj plus v2 yj plus v3 zj this is what we have for the structure factor the structure factor doesn't need to be a real number it can be a complex number in general when we take the diffraction intensity it would be square of the structure structure factor so that would become a real number anyway so structure factor being complex doesn't require any physical quantity to be com uh, complex amplitude is not really a physical quantity it's the intensity that is the physical quantity so the physical quantity would still be real now let's consider an example of the bcc lattice structure factor for the bcc lattice we are going to find out the bcc lattice can be referred to with a cubic lattice that is cubic lat uh, the axis vectors corresponding to a simple cubic lattice and we can have identical atoms located at the origin and another point that is the body center the coordinate half 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 with these two identical atoms at these two coordinates using the simple cubic translation vectors primitive translation vectors we can represent a bcc lattice that you have already worked out in one of the homeworks so we can write s v1 v2 v3 equals f that is the atomic form factor times 1 plus exponential of minus i pi v1 plus v2 plus v3 so where did we get this one if we put uh, v1 plus v1 v2 v3 uh, sorry x j y j zj everything equals 0 we will get exponential of 0 that is 1 and for the other thing 
uh, exponential of minus twice minus i twice pi times v1 xj plus v2 yj plus v3 zj that's going to give us this quantity here so with this the f is the atomic form factor so that we are yet to calculate but we can already see that if this quantity exponential is the value is minus 1 then s will be 0 so when would be with it be minus 1 if we have v1 plus v2 plus v3 if this quantity is an odd integer and s would be twice f if this becomes v1 plus v2 plus v3 becomes even integer then this quantity exponential of this would be 1 and 1 plus 1 we will have 2 from this curly bracket so this condition is v1 plus v2 plus v3 is even integer for s being twice f so obvious homework here for you would be to find the structure factor corresponding to an fcc lattice